We're at the Perkins workshop today. We're starting a new job and we've got some new tools we're gonna show you today. Are you excited? I'm super excited, let's tear into it. For everyone's reference, I just wanna mention that all of these tools were gifted to us, which is awesome. We really appreciate it. What should we start with? I think we should start with the biggest, the baddest, the most powerful in the biggest box. Okay. It's hiding in the back. Let's go check it out. So if you don't know what this is, this is a power trowel or part of it. We've got to assemble the rest of it, which is these handles. It's for finishing concrete slabs, not by hand, which is the desirable way if you've ever done it for yourself. This is a Tomahawk Power Model JXPT36K. And the 36 is for the width, 36 inch wide. It's got a Honda power plant, 160 cc, which I like. Honda is very reliable. So this is like a dream tool for us. I didn't think we could ever own one of these ourselves. This is gonna be amazing. It is, I'm super excited. I am tired of renting them. They're always busted up, beat up. Covered and, in concrete. Uh, you have to try to get them back on the same day, which is hard a lot of times. You sit there waiting for the concrete and then you know, before you know it, closing time already came and went. Yeah, and uh, if you didn't realize, we live kind of out in the sticks and it's about a half hour drive one way to rent these if they have one available, which is sometimes. So we're gonna get this thing put together the rest of the way and fired up. This takes me back to my BMX days right here. I know, that's what I was thinking as soon as I saw that thing, except we didn't have these awesome pads right <laughs> I know. there. Might be why I like driving these. It's like riding a bike kind of. That's feeling pretty good right there. This pad goes up against your waist. When I've used these before, it helps you control it a lot easier. That would be bad if we didn't put oil in it and start it, I guess. Right now we're adjusting this cable on this threaded rod and this will be what tips the blades up and down. You can adjust the angle depending on how wet or dry the concrete is that you're working on. And right now we've got it adjusted just sort of centrally as far as the amount of thread that we have on this little adjuster. I had something like that in college for funneling some stuff. Did it have a know. thing like, uh, you, like a hat you put <laughs> on your head? No. <laughs> Has anybody ever started an engine with no oil? Leave in the comments, a brand new engine. Okay, I think we have the power trowel assembled. We're gonna fire that up at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna try it right here on this part of the slab. On to the next tool. Up next, and this is something we just got in the mail, was a joist hanger tool jig called a hang em fast. Hangman tool. Hangman tool. And we've never tried this out, and we're gonna try it now. But the basic gist of this is that it helps you hold the joist hanger so that you can install it before you put the joist or whatever it is in. Uh, it has a positive stop that aligns it with the bottom of whatever kind of rim board that you have. You insert the hanger into it and it holds it at the correct width, which is nice. Hi. So far I'm liking this, and then you hold it up there, shoot it in. So far, it seems to be doing what it says it's supposed to do. Let's, let's try it out. Let's shoot it. If you didn't know, these joist hangers kind of come spread out a little bit when you get them new. And so that is nice. It keeps it at the correct inch and a half width. Uh, this isn't really a problem that doesn't exist. It does exist. It's not a real easy thing to install these beforehand. For that reason, we mostly install them after we put the joist in. Just in case the depth of the joist material is different, we flush the tops. And in this case, you're gonna align all the bottoms if you do it this way, which could be okay if you're using kiln dried white wood. They should be all exactly the same nine and a quarter, six and a quarter, whatever depth. If you're using pressure treated though, I'd really recommend doing the joist and then adding the hanger, flushing the top. So we're gonna try it out. That's it, we're gonna shoot it. Here we go. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it looks good. It's perfectly flush inside of this to the bottom of that. Inch and a half wide. I don't know, I think we'll throw it in the truck. Uh, why not? It's lightweight, small. I don't know how much they cost. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very inventive tool. Though. It is very inventive. You don't get your fingers you know, pinched or crunched. That is a big problem. I don't know what else to say. It's simple, but it seems to be effective. Let's see what Jamie thinks. What do you think? All right, my real opinion of this tool. I think it's a very creative way to solve a problem. You know, the problems you were talking about, about them being spread out or getting maligned. I think what it will really maybe allow somebody that has less experience or less, I don't want to say skill, but just less experience to do a good job uh, without struggling. That's what I think. Okay. 
it might mitigate struggle. Yeah, it's simple. You stick it in, you do that, you shoot it. I mean, I think I think a very wait. How's that work? Beginner. <laughs> I think a beginner could do this. I can actually, still see someone we hired asking us, "Wait a minute, how?" And actually how do, you do, do a good job. I think I think it could work good. Okay, I've yeah. seen people put these on and make them too tight, where you couldn't get. <laughs> Get the choice then. Lose your you mind. Lose your mind. Or if they're too wide, just so you know, when you nail it, it just it warps the hanger really badly. And I'm sure they're not as strong if they're all mangled in when you toe nail it together. Yeah. Okay, we got to move on. We're I just, think it's good. We're just rambling. Okay. <laughs> Life as a YouTuber is amazing. You just get tools in the mail and you get to check them out. And I just can't believe it. So I just got to say that again. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, the next tool we have here is a Tetra Grip flooring nailer by Passload. And it shoots very special nails. Let's check it out. I don't know if I know what a Tetra is. You'll know in a second. Okay. It looks like a roofing nailer or a siding nailer. It's a little bigger. I'm going to say mega size. It's, it's like framing nailer. I just want to mention, though, that we have a quick drive drill that we have used for a subfloor for some time, and that's not very fast. It works really well at fastening the subfloor down. It does. But it's it, slow. It can be a little fidgety sometimes Yeah, with, with it getting stopped up or different things. Or, yeah, your, the, bits. the bit gets stuck and pulls out of the... Yeah, so... Sometimes. That's why I'm excited about this, maybe a faster way to get something done good. And that's a nice hose. It, it came with a really nice hose in a super mega air connector. I don't love what Jamie's doing with the razor knife and this hose. I am. Um, it's delicate like surgery here, but I, I'm pretty confident that my patient is going to make it here. I don't know. We'll see. Wow. This is a long hose. Wow. You only need one hose. I don't think we've ever built a house big enough that this one hose wouldn't reach all the way from one end to the other. <laughs> Ray's like, he's gone. Dude. Okay, so that's, that's amazing. Cool. That's, that's uh, 100 foot, I guess. Does every gun come with a hose like this? I don't know. I'm saying the hose is probably 75 bucks for I a know, hose like that. I know, at least. <laughs> Took a lot of air. Ooh, it feels beefy. Here's our box of Tetra Grip nails. They're coil collated. That's a mouthful. And they have a little TG on each nail head. I guess so you don't try to throw this in a regular coil nailer. It's a specialty coil. And I think the nail itself is where the specialty really is. So let's get in close on these things. So I don't know if you can see this. It's spiraled and each spiral is little teeth along each of the spirals. I can say this is not your granddaddy's spiral siding nail right no. here. Okay. Uh, and, and I wonder, they're black. I wonder if that's glue. Adhesive. I bet it is. Well, let's load it up and give it a shot. We're going to shoot down this scrap piece of sheathing to our saw horse, Fantastic. which will never come off. I'll take care of that later. I do like this idea of nails that hold like screws and you don't have a squeaky floor. So I, I like the idea already. That's way faster than screwing. It is. I think it's going to be great. I like that it's a coil too, so you have a lot more fasteners. Uh, we have nailed down floors with a ring shanked. Yeah. Eights, eight, uh, eight pennies. And you just end up going through a lot of clips of nails and running out of nails a lot. We've so We've bent a lot of nails over too. Yeah. Using the ring shank. So I'm interested yeah, to, I wonder see if these are these, stiffer. to see how they drive. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited to try this out. I think it's going to outperform our nailer and our screwing technique that we have to just be a really good technique to put down flooring, subflooring that is. Jamie could not move on till he looked at one of these nails through a microscope. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. How do they make that thing? That is I crazy. Wonder. I bet it's proprietary. I just wasted about 30 <laughs> minutes of my life. <laughs> it looked like the surface of like an asteroid or something. We're a little hungry, so we're going to take five, try something else we got in the mail from Dubai, from uh, someone, the Illumeras. Thank you, guys. Today's video is brought to you by Vever, and today we're checking out the Vever thermal imaging camera. This is a really useful tool if you're a builder or you do home inspections for checking for air infiltration, checking that your mechanical systems don't leak, and checking out that they're putting out the proper temperature air into your home. Nick, you are looking so hot right now. 19, oh, 34 Celsius. Hold still. I got a picture of you. 
The Vevra Infrared Thermal Imager helps you see the invisible using infrared waves. It comes with a really nice carrying case so you can slap it on your hip and get around the job site. You can see, measure, and capture temperatures up to 1022 degrees Fahrenheit accurately and from a safe distance, that's important. And you can also use a video recording function so that you can identify intermittent heat abnormalities. The gifted 64 gigabyte SD card stores all the photos you take, up to 360,000 of them. And the built-in lithium ion rechargeable battery can support up to 11 hours of continuous operation. You can transfer the photos to a computer via the USB cable while charging the thermal imaging camera. Work at an optimal pace with the equipment that doesn't slow you down. It's IP54 rated for protection against water and dust and designed to withstand a six and a half foot drop. All these things are great if you're gonna use it on a job site. Also, audio alarms remind you when your temperature is out of range and the LED work light allows you to reach dark and hard to reach areas. Thanks again to Vever for sponsoring our video. And if you wanna get your own thermal imaging camera, just click the link down in our video description and use the code VVPRO and you'll get 5% off. Up next, this box came to my house the other night. Tough built, driven by innovation. I wish it would have come to my house. Okay. Still yours. Looks like a crazy hammer from the future. <laughs> Look at this does. thing, dude. It does. It's quite wow. futuristic. Let's, let's take off the label there uh, so we can really get a feel for it here. So, initial thoughts here is nice grippy rubber handle. Um, and I like that this is slick. That might actually go into like hammer sleeves. Ooh. Nice and easy, 20 ounce, which is, what is my stiletto? It's a 15. Uh, your, 15, your it's a, yeah. All metal one is 15. I have a titanium handled stiletto currently, which is like a $300 hammer. Yeah. I looked this up and it's only 50-ish dollars available at Lowe's. That's only $50? Yeah, so, I mean, for mm. the money, I'm thinking this is a crazy cool hammer anyway. And I think the main selling point is this shock stop um, the head somehow has a little give to it. And I'll see if I can find some stock footage of that to see if it actually works. Hammer also has a really oddly shaped face on it, which could be good for getting in tight spaces. I'm not sure. Let's hit a few nails and see what we think. Got a few two and a half or three inch roofing nails. That's what we could find. We'll drive them, see what. Okay, that feels all right. Mm. It does feel way different than my other hammer. So I, it's hard to say, ooh, see I'm used to having the really wide head. Mm -hmm. Go uh, ahead. I, I was gonna say, you, you need to stop, <laughs> let me try it here. But wow, that does have a grippy. It is grippy you know all what? the way it's up. It's grippy all the way. Yeah. So if you choke up on the, on the stock a little bit there, no big deal. I, it's hard for me to tell because it's so different. I, I wanna say it does have some features that I like like this nail starter with a magnet so you can reach way up high like if you want to start a nail way up high you can't reach both hands don't nail it into the side you of can start a nail shop. like that wow and also has a straight rip claw which i like so initial kind of feeling about this for 50 bucks is for 50 bucks it seems pretty awesome it does i think we'll uh, take it to the job site and give yeah. it a real go i think that's all we can really say about that but yeah look at that grip all the way up here that's how I usually hammer, like, pick, 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 pick. <laughs> Gonna save that arm. I'm getting tired, but we're down to only two tools left. Uh, okay. We'll do the small one first, and we got another big one from Tomahawk, which is also exciting. Okay, makes a great table here in the meantime. Yeah, so this is also from Passload, and we do work with Passload, just in all fairness, so that you know. Uh, but we do love their nail guns. They that's, make some really nice stuff. That's why we work with them. Yeah, so this is another one that's new to us. It's an 18 gauge finish nailer. So for the last 20-ish years, we've been using a lot of their pneumatic nailers. Recently, we've gotten their cordless versions of the framing nailer. We have an angled 16 gauge nailer, which I really like, also cordless. This is the 18 gauge, and I think it's brand new. It runs on a special uh, trim size cartridge and also a small battery that you charge. And I have used this one at the house. I installed a bunch of quarter round in a video that you may have seen when I replaced my flooring. And it performed really well. It's really light. It has a really long, uh, kind of a narrow design down here where you can get into corners, which I really like. It reloads really easy. So all in all, this was far superior to um, some of the other 18 gauges I've owned. 
I really hate dragging airlines through a finished house. Yeah, like into too. all the separate rooms. It's a real hassle. So for me, having the cordless finish nailers is almost better than the cordless framing nailers. Last box, and this sounds super fun. It's a Tomahawk Power Screed. If you don't know what that is, we'll show you in a second. I wanna say thanks again to Tomahawk. If you haven't looked through their catalog online and you got a few hours to kill, that's a fun thing to do. They got all kinds of fun power equipment. I believe it. I can't even tell you how much time this has already saved me because, you know, I like to make things. Oh no. You know, I thought about making my own. I mean, okay. come on, nobody's surprised by that, right? No. Um, but now I don't have to. Okay. Let's unbox it. it says canceled on here. <laughs> uh, I wonder what that's all about. I don't know. It came, so it must not have been canceled. I feel like this is some Indiana Jones, Ark of the Covenant type stuff here. Don't look at it, Jamie. Great movie. Okay, there, there we go. Yeah. Oh, don't look. Oh, <laughs> I gotta look. I can't not look. There we go. This is interesting. All of the bolts and nuts have this rubber gasket on it. And it's because this thing literally vibrates. That's, that's its job. That's what it's meant yeah. to do. And so that's nice that it's not going to vibrate itself apart so easily, I think. It kind of just make everything not rattle, hold it tighter. Mm. The other half of this machine is these screed boards or screed poles. I don't know what you call them, but we've got an eight footer and a 12 footer. And this is what rides on top of the concrete and makes it nice and flat. So that's nice to have two options to go with this part of the machine. What's really important about these is that they're straight. If they're curved, then your concrete is curved. I wanted to show off what we used to use before getting this thing, we haven't even used it yet, is this hand screed pole, it's aluminum. And you basically have to get down really low to the ground in the concrete with this thing. And you jig it back and forth and pull it and just sort of work the concrete back like this, which is sort of back breaking and terrible. Oh, it'll wear you out. It'll wear so you out. Fast. So this is gonna allow us to stand up and this does the vibrating action for you, the engine. And so you just walk backwards and leave behind a perfectly flat, smooth piece of concrete in front of you, which is gonna be really nice. This little filler cup was in the box in the crate and I'm glad I saw it. And I looked at the engine because I thought this was a two-stroke engine, but it's not. <laughs> if you're not familiar, a two-stroke engine, you put a fuel oil mix mm -hmm. in the tank and it doesn't need any oil like in the crankcase. And a four stroke, definitely, if you don't put oil in the crankcase, you're gonna have some problems, so. Disaster averted. Uh, yeah. Does it tell you how much oil? Um, we can read in the instructions. Huh. But that was, whoo, that would've been bad. Put two stroke oil in this thing and yeah. let it. Here, just do this right here. Yeah, that's great. From what I know, this thing works by spinning an off balance weight that's at the end of this drive shaft down here in this part. And it's kind of like how your cell phone vibrates, I think. It's like an off-balance piece of metal that spins really fast and gives you that <laughs> kind of <laughs> kind of thing. Mine Except this is on a much larger it. scale with a gas engine. We do have one mystery part that came with the power trowel that is not in the instruction book, and it's not something we've ever used, and it's this. Yeah, looks like a giant saucer, like from Family Vacation. It's a disc thing. I think it's actually for, for troweling, when you want to get out there and it's a little bit wet, but you want to go ahead and get started, the blades actually engage into these little keepers, and I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use it on the concrete. Okay. Now, we might be exposing our ignorance here, but um, <laughs> that's, I'm just telling you, that's what- I think it, we're fine with doing that. Yeah. So either- It's that, or it's just packaging to keep it safe while it got delivered. It could be, it could be. But if it is, it's that's a lot of like extra steel and money for just some packaging. You would think they would use some plywood or something. We'll get to the bottom of this. We're gonna find out. Regular gas, right? I think so. What you want? Oh, he's on. Yep. Okay. What do you think? I think we're good to go. It Ready to the, pour some concrete. It does the thing it's supposed to do, that's for sure. Yeah. Awesome, fired right up.
try the safety switch here. Hey, I guess we wired it in right. Oh yeah, that's a good thing to test. Yeah. So if you don't know, this is a centrifugal safety switch. If you let go of the machine, the handlebars will spin around in a circle fast enough that the weight of this will engage it into a little contactor there, killing the engine. Smart. That's it for our video on our new tools that we have. And just so anyone knows, if I didn't say it already, we're super thankful to have new and nice top of the line tools to build with. It wasn't always like that. We built for our dad who was pretty cheap or didn't have money one or the other. We had, Sorry, dad. Yeah, <laughs> at that time, uh, he was a river guide mainly. So we had like old, old tools and not very basic, many, basic and not basic. very many for, for decades. So. Uh, we're super excited. We got everything we need to do a slab, start our new project. Thanks for building with us today. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it was helpful. We'll see you on the next one.